And maybe you can explain this one because I simply cannot. ISIS beheads 21 Christians solely because they are Christians threatening other Christians. And the New York Times, which holds itself out as a nation's paper, buried this beheading of Christians on page A6 of today's paper. And joining us, our political panel, the National Journal's Ron Fournier and the National Review's Jim Garrity. Ron, first to you. I, if yeah. I were the editor-in-chief, this would have been page one for me. 21 Christians beheaded because they are Christians, their ideology, their thinking, their faith. Possibly. First of all, as editor-in-chief, I realize we are now in a digital first world, and what's on the front page of the New York Times means a lot less than it did a few years ago. If well, you but it sends, a, it sends a message what you think. Really. It if sends you, a message. If you want to, most people who are influenced by the New York Times and the news business are online. If you went online, you saw that story at the top of the New York Times website. If you look at their page, they have Denmark at the top. That's a big terrorism story. They have allegations against an imam, pretty important story in terrorism, and they have a, a story about a Democratic governor in a lot of, prou in a lot of trouble. So I wouldn't say this is a you know, left-wing layout. I, you know what, the, the Democratic governor is a story from Friday, and it's a small state with that uh, is not as significant as to the American people. I think there are probably more Christians worried about Christians being beheaded for Christians than a governor who has a funny situation with a fiance in a small state. I just, like I said, in, in, in this day and age, what's on the front page of New York Times means a lot less than it did. See, to me, it, sen to me it sends a big message. Yeah, would, 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 you, would you take Denmark off? And put, I would take, I'd, I'd take I the governor off. The I'd take the governor off right away. Make Go it all terrorism. I, yeah, you know what? The governor, was, let me say, the governor was a little sexier story because he's got a fiancé that's a little bit funny. Okay. If, uh, if he wasn't up there, there'd be a lot of people saying, oh, the Democratic governor the New York Times is covering for him. Friday. That was, a, that was a Friday story. There's, there's I did the story on Friday. We dumped the Podesta profile or the Philip Levine obituary. gets bumped to the inside. That's right. uh, look, when you see exactly what you're talking about in the opening of this show, when you see Christians beheaded for their beliefs, and it's not often traditional ISIS land, Syria, uh, Syria and Iraq, but it's in Libya, which was not too long ago. You know, we, we all remember Benghazi, but we really haven't been thinking about Libya too recently in terms of the news discussion or in terms of the administration. The administration wants the world to think things are going okay. We've got some problems, but we don't need to dramatically rethink our policies. Everything's going. The trouble you're expecting is about what you can expect from circumstances like this. Blood on the front page of it, 23 Christians is the sort of thing we say, whoa, whoa, this is not succeeding. I, We're right, let, me, let me just let me I, say I just something. I guarantee you, there's not editors something. in the New York Times that are saying, oh, we don't want to put a big story on the front right, page. Let me just say, uh, let, me give you, let me give you one take one for you. One is the John Podesta profile didn't have to be on the front page, but I'll give you one. The Washington Post puts it on A7. Los Angeles Times puts it on A1. And USA Today, A1. But the so Washington Post put it deep you could not in. go on either any of those websites today without seeing the story. You guys are all obsessed about what's on the front page of a newspaper when nobody's really looking at newspapers I, I, anymore, which is see, another problem. I guess, see, I, I see it as a bigger picture is that I think for a long time the people have been sort of denying a little bit what's going on with Christians in this world. And I think the beheading, lining up 21 Christians and having them beg for their life and videotaping it in a country that has completely disintegrated where ISIS is growing, it's to me, is like huge. Story. It is huge, a huge story. Huge. You know what? If you go on the New York Times site right now, it's on the top of the website. I, I just in think a, we're... In a lot of newsrooms, <laughs> the concept of Christians as victims doesn't fit the narrative. Oh, now, come on. There's a lot of newsrooms, including mine, that's filled with Christians who are really appalled, don't Christians don't appalled by what happened over there and are spending a lot of time they are used to risking their lives covering the story. And we're going to sit here and say Monday morning quarterback, the, the selection on, a, on the front page? I mean, come on. The New York Times right now has people overseas we do what we always, risking their can you, lives. Can you and I do what we always do, agree to disagree on things? Respectfully. Definitely. <laughs> so Definitely. We respectfully disagree on this one. Anyway, uh, panel, thank you very much.